I have five key autumn fall pieces that you can make with a suggestion of a few patterns and I'll also include what I plan to make as well. It's really hot in here today, typical, but the weather could turn at any moment. So number one for the first key item is a sweatshirt. Now this can then, you can wear over a dress with skirts, trousers, jeans, all sorts. So that's why I'm saying it's a key piece which everyone kind of needs, which I think. So I have one, two, three, four, five patterns which I'm you may want to try or pick one of them, should I say. First one is the Billy Sweatshirt by Tilly and the Buttons. Now this one, um, you have the option, You have. I don't know why I'm waving my arms around, but there are sleeve options for a balloon sleeve or a regular sleeve. The, the top also, or the sweatshirt, also has the option of being a dress, which hits just above the knee. So it's quite a good option if you want to then go and dress for going into winter time, which you then want to wear with tights and boots, or you can, if you buy the pattern, you have then got that option of a more dressy sweatshirt with a thinner sort of jersey for the balloon sleeve effect. Now, one thing I would point out though, is I, I haven't personally made this, but I have seen lots of people say that the neckline is quite high and quite tight. So it is worth a quick Google, and I think that people um, have put videos perhaps up of options to change the neckline on that. So if you don't mind like a high up neckline, then that's a good option for you. I am referring to my notes because I won't remember all this off the top of my head. The second one is a firm favorite with a lot of sewists, and that is the Toaster Sweater by Soha 7. They have two options, and they also do um, another option made by Simplicity, which I have actually made the Simplicity one, but if you go for the, the actual one from So House 7, which they brought out themselves, not in collaboration with anyone, they have two options for the neck. So it's quite a loose fit. There is options for a high-low hem and um, different heights on the, like a funnel neck. And that goes from size extra small to extra, extra large. I think with all the patterns, I will link all where I can find links. They're not necessarily affiliate links, I don't think I'm putting down, but just I'll put links to the patterns so you can then look at the sizes because what a large in one size might be completely different actual measurement to a large in something else. So it's not really a clue of what their sizes are, but um, I think it's quite good because it's a loose one and it has been really, really popular. Apparently it was the top pattern of 2017 or something according to the website. Moving on, so the third one is the Nova Sweater by Sinclair Patterns. Now this one has a hoodie option to it. It's a raglan, uh, raglan sleeve and it has three neck options. So you've got the hoodie, the sort of crew neck, and then there's like a half sort of a low funnel neck as well. And there are, I mean, with all of these you could colour block, but they give, they show you with the colour block options. So I think that's quite a good three for one pattern. Um, I think that Sinclair are PDF only, don't quote me on that, but I think they are. But that is a really good one. So if you buy that pattern, then you have, like with the Billy, I guess, you then have got different options. If you're like me, I don't really pattern hack. I like someone to have done the work for me. So pa a pattern which has more than one option is good value for money. So the fourth one is the Phoenix Sweatshirt by Stylark. I hadn't heard of this, I'll be honest with you, but when I had a quick Google on what was around, I saw this and the picture which stood out to me, they'd made it up in a cable knit fabric. Now last year, I saw loads of cable knit fabrics on online fabric shops, so it's quite easy to get hold of. And it just gives a different feel to it, I think, more like we would say in the UK, a jumper rather than a sweatshirt. More than almost looking like it's been hand knitted um, and smarter I guess but this one is quite a slouchy um, it's a, quite a slouchy sweatshirt if you want to call it um, that is a long sleeve one and again that goes sizes 4 to 30 but with Stylark you do have to be careful that because some of them you buy as a single size and then there are other options where you buy as a multi-size so if you want to buy that multi-size option you have to just be careful which one you are selecting because it's not that obvious you don't automatically get all sizes when you buy them but I thought that was quite a nice option if you wanted to try a cable knit fabric rather than just a regular sweatshirt fabric. The fifth one is the one that I am hopefully going to make because it's the pattern that I purchased last year and this is the Ada Sweatshirt by Schnitzchen Patterns, which I can never pronounce properly, hopefully that's correct. This one also has the hoodie option. So um, I have made the sweatshirt and that has two length options. So you've got the short or the long 
as a sweatshirt with different colour blocking options. Again, I'm waving my arms around, sorry about that. And there are, you can do it with a stripe. They also have the hoodie option, which has a yoke which goes from the top of the sleeve right across and then incorporates the hood as well. So there are lots of options. And as I already have this pattern and I have purged and decluttered a lot of my sewing patterns, I have a playlist about my decluttering, which I'll link in the description box below. I am going to work with the patterns that I have and the fabrics that I have to make these key pieces. So that is a good one to look. The sizing, although it goes from an extra small to an extra large, the extra large is not actually that big. So again, check out what the measurements are for those particular sizes. Now going in patterns of five, um, my next one is my second key piece, which is a jacket or coat. And I have five options for you, which, um, which are suitable for transitioning weather. So I'm not really looking at big thick winter coats, but more that sort of going into cold weather or coming out of cold weather, which is suitable. The first one is one that I made last year, which is the Sorrento denim jacket. This is by So Over It Patterns, and it's a re the instructions are really good. With So Over It, they're really clear. This is so part of their ebook of patterns, so you would have to purchase the ca their capsule. Sometimes they do have it on offer though, but it is from their Summer Dreaming ebook so you do get other patterns in there, which actually works out quite well. But if you just wanted the denim jacket, I know that Seamwork patterns, they do have one very similar. There are, there's about two or three. Um, I can't remember the third one, but there are patterns out there for denim jackets for by indie companies, which have really clear instructions. But I have worn my denim jacket so much because it's sort of, with the Sorrento, it's loose enough to have a jumper or something underneath it and then put it on top. So, or you can then wear it over the top of just like t-shirts or summer dresses as well. So that then layers up and I think a denim jacket is quite a key piece in most people's wardrobes. The second one is a raincoat. Now, stick with me, obviously here in the UK, um, I made a raincoat last year and I used the I Am Patterns, I Am Jack's raincoat and I would say the denim jacket and the raincoat are the two most worn me maids I've ever made. I've had so much wear out of it. The good thing about this raincoat pattern is that it's loose enough again to have those layers, to have, because it's nothing worse than having big thick jumper on, it's pouring with rain, you don't want a winter coat, but the raincoat is really just designed to put over thin layers. So this one, it will fit over multiple layers and you can make it in all kinds of different fabrics. And I really like it, but I think a raincoat, if you have a climate like we have in the UK, is quite a key piece. The third one is more of a winter coat, which is the Chloe coat, and this is my Sew Over It Patterns. I was going to make this, I was going to buy it, because I was looking up winter coat options. Now this one has like no, there's no stand-up collar. I think there's an option, and as part of the design, there is like some kind of fold over scarf that you can make, but that is not attached to the coat. So it is just a round collarless coat with a zip all the way up. Now, I do prefer buttons because then I can just put like one button on. I don't always want the coat fully done up, which is what you would have to do with this one, but I think it probably would be quite easy to change that for poppers or buttons if you wanted to do that and eliminate the zip. So that one goes all the way up. The only thing that put me off buying that one is if it's quite, if I've got um, a higher neck jumper or something like that, I didn't really want it poking out of the coat if it clashes with the colour that I'm making for the coat. But it is a really simple design and again, so over instructions are really clear and I think it's had really good reviews on that one. The next one, the fourth one, is one that I almost nearly bought as well, which is the Nino jacket. Now this one is by Pauline Alice Patterns in two different lengths. So it has a rounded collar or the collarless. So it's very similar in the Chloe, but it does have a quite a deep inverted back pleat. So you can have this at um, like waist height or you can have it at mid thigh and that one is unlined. I think that the one which is higher, the short one is fully lined but the longer one is unlined. So again, if you wanted the unlined one, that works well for autumn. By buying the pit, if you bought the pattern, you then have the option if you wanted to make a winter coat and then just make it in the length of the unlined one and just add a lining. So there's lots of options for you, but it seemed like quite a nice pattern and more of a classic pattern as well. The fifth one 
is the one that I have purchased, which is the Mallard jacket. Now I know I said that I was going with patterns that I already have, but the coat pattern, I have made a couple of coats, but I wanted something different for this year. So that is something that I have bought this year, and that is because there are two options for that, for the Mallard jacket. So you do have the two length options, and I actually found, when I was decluttering, I found some fabric, and I'm not entirely sure what it is. It's kind of charcoal -y. It's quite heavy. I mean, if I thump, it's quite a thump to the floor. Is that a technical term for working out fibre content? No, I mean, I don't think it's wool, but I thought I would make the short version in black. And then I do have some green wool coating. Oh, let me just grab it. Then I have some green wool coating, which I purchased in a sale in January. It's not necessarily the colour I would have gone for, but there was a sale on, I bought it online, and it's just after Christmas when we were in lockdown. So there was no time to get samples or anything else. So this is the green and this is a wool fabric and I bought this for some Christmas money. So I thought that I would try the Mallard, the short Mallard jacket out with black and then if that goes well, I've got my size ready to make the, the long winter coat in the green. I just need to get some lining fabric. Now this is quite, this is, um, this is sort of sold as a beginner coat pattern. There aren't loads of pieces to it and it has um, snaps that you then sew on. So you no need to worry about buttonholes. So I thought that that was quite a good option. And um, that is, oh, sorry, I just forgot to tell you. That is by the Sewing Revival. And if you check out Alex, Alex Judge Sews and the Dahlia Society, both Alex and Kristen did a collaboration video about that particular jacket, which is also what sold it to me. So I will link their, both those videos down in the description box below if you want to check out their full review because they have made it, I'm just planning to make it at the minute. My third key piece to make is a three quarter length sleeve t-shirt. Now this one I find there's so many t-shirt patterns out there, but when, if you're like me, then it gets a bit more chilly, but not quite cold enough to wear a cardigan or a sweatshirt, but that is just the short sleeve. It's just a little bit, it's quite, you know, it's not hot enough to wear that. The three quarter length works quite well. I am someone who, I'm a serial sleeve roller. So if I have a full length sleeve, those sleeves are getting rolled up anyway. So I quite like a three quarter length and I have four options for those. First one is the Coco Top by Tilly and the Buttons. Again, this has two options. This can be made into a dress or it can just be made as a top. This is a boat neck three quarter length sleeve. I've made this a couple of times. I actually have a dress which I haven't, I don't really get any wear out of and it's a little bit too short. So I am thinking of cutting it off to make it in the top and then that will fit in with my awesome winter wardrobe. The next one is one I discovered, which is the Afro Top by Fibre Mood Patterns. Now this one is a boat neck and that's quite a loose fit. So I would say it look, from the pictures, it looks looser, a looser fit than something like the Coco. Third one is the Lark Tea, which is one of my favorites. I've made loads of these this year by Grainline Studio and that is, that has, that Lark, that t-shirt pattern has so many options. You've got V-neck, crew neck, and then you've got boat neck. And I never realized that they had a boat neck option. So there are also different sleeves. You've got um, a cat sleeve, a short sleeve, and they do three quarter and I think full length sleeve. So that is a really good pattern to get different options all in one little, bun one little bundle. So I am hopefully going to make the boat neck three quarter length sleeve. So I thought that was quite a good one. If you don't own that pattern, that is, you know, you've got quite a good bundle of options all in one go. The last one is the ED top, and this is by Sew Over It Patterns, and this is a three quarter length boat neck. It's a more of a fitted top, but again, this is part of one of their capsule wardrobes. So um, if you have the capsule wardrobe, then you're getting, you know, then it's part of there, and I would just want to highlight it. If you don't, then it's worth always keeping an eye on Sew Over It. If you sign up to their newsletter, you'll be notified because usually they will do op offers of like 20% off their patterns. So the fourth key piece is a card cardigan. I know not everybody likes cardigans, but if you don't want a sweatshirt and you, you find that's a bit hot, cardigan, you know, obviously you can have that buttoned up or loose and then it's, that is a really good layering piece. Again, we'll go over t-shirts, dresses, 
all sorts of things so it can be dressed up dressed down and depending on the fabric that you choose you can then have all different options now I hopefully I have made a couple of these in the sweatshirt fabric which is quite a casual style but then I did think that I'm going to make in mid grey I haven't bought this fabric yet so I haven't got it in a mid grey knit cable fabric and just have it so it's sort of more of a snuggly sort of cardigan possibly some wooden buttons so it looks quite smart um on days when perhaps i'm going out somewhere or going out in the evening and i want that extra layer but i don't want to look sloppy shall i say some sometimes that sweatshirts can be quite casual this would be more dressed up piece and i think if i do a mid gray cable knit with a nice white um like scoop neck tee oh yeah the lark tee had a scoop um neck option i forgot as well so with a scoop neck option t-shirt with that i think that'll pair up and it's quite a good basic to have it you know with making a plain fabric that i'm going to pick it will then you've got loads of options so it's an alternative for that which is very similar which is McCall's 7476 I did own this pattern but I did have to grade up the pattern and I found the neck band kind of stretched out a bit but that may just have been me trying to adapt a pattern that I already have but yeah so if you are in say like the states and they have options on the big four patterns that is quite a good one to get I thought I'd like just talk to about the colours but I haven't realised I've got some more so I will whiz through these but again they'll all be listed down in the description box below if you didn't quite catch them and I'll try and put the names on the screen. The Fuller Cardigan by Cashmereet, we've got the Jamie Cardigan by Ready to Sew and we've got the Juniper Cardigan by Jennifer Lauren Handmade. The Juniper Cardigan I would say looks more fitted as well as the Cashmereet one looks like you could make that with a thinner knit fabric. So. I haven't looked in depth at those ones but they are different styles and if you look on the Foldlines website foldline.com they have more cardigan options available as well I think some of the big four have other ones as well so I just wanted to highlight a few there. Now the last one, uh, the fifth key piece for a changing wardrobe I would say is an oversized shirt. Now this again can be well worn with a vest top underneath or on its own and then layered up with a sweatshirt with the collar poking out it's quite nice um, so I think that you know a shirt which isn't too fitted then can be ideal for this kind of weather and the Archer shirt by Grainline Studio is a really good option it's more sort of um, like it's pictured in like a check shirt but you could then make that in like a chambray you can make that in you know light cotton there is that option of making it in a fabric which you could then layer and then it will see you through without the layers into spring summer so that is a good option and the Monta Montana 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 shirt by itch to stitch that is a very similar option as well that one has the option of having a tie front or you can have it just undone and it's quite a loose loose um, option shirt as well obviously it looks quite nice you can roll the sleeves up how on when the weather's colder have that down and have the buttoned cuff so both of those are they are indie patterns but there are lots of other options available for oversized shirts I know the big four they have I mean I'd be here all day if I was to highlight every single shirt but I think a loose fitting shirt which can then be laid underneath or put a layer over it is perfect for going into autumn or coming out of winter. Please comment down below which key pieces you're planning to make this season. If you found this video helpful please give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe and I, if you want to check out which machine I'm making my items on then I have a video all about my new sewing machine which I will link down below and I will see you over there.